Hello and welcome to um, this tutorial, the, the second part of the accessing your MySQL server remotely. Um, in the previous tutorial we, we went quite fast through installing the MySQL server, um, adding a user with full um, every single privilege of the, the user was David. Then we also um, configured our, our, um, our ETC, so let's just um, take a look at it. Let's uh, this one here. So we configured our uh, etc. Dot my, or my dot cnf file, and we added this bind address equals 10.10.10.30, which is the IP address of this one machine um, that we're running. Okay, this virtual machine in the background that we're running. Okay, once we did that, uh, we then edited the IP tables. Okay, to make sure that the um, that port 3306 was open on the input and output chain. Okay, we only added the input chain um, because the output chain has a, a default policy um, of accept. Okay, once we did that, we naturally start restarted our uh, IP tables and our MySQL server. Um, so we have all the con the configurations were um, applied. Okay, we then went over to uh, we then added a user. Of James, um, and we gave th James the grant privilege, uh, gave James the privileges um, to be able to access the DB underscore James database and every single table, but only this one database, and only using the computer of 10.10.10.10, another machine. So um, let's just with this one machine, let's just log on to MySQL using um, user David. Okay. And come on to here. Let's just control L to clear. Okay, and let's just say select uh, user whoops, and host from MySQL user. Okay, and as you can see here, we have two users. Okay, we have, um, oh, sorry, we have three users potentially, but five in, in the listing. We have David and David. Let's just concentrate on that for now. Now, David can access this one MySQL server on the local host which is on this machine and on um, the loopback address root is exactly the same so it can only a only access on this one machine but James is not entitled to access the MySQL server at all on this machine or whilst being logged in on this machine but he has the right to, to access our MySQL server located on this machine but he has to be on um, the machine of 10.10.10.10 okay with inside of our local area network so it has to be okay so um, but James only has the privileges to access um, let's just show show databases only has privileges to access this one database so he can't access any others so let's come back over to our um, other machine which is over here this is David CentOS okay and we'll just say select uh, user first of all. Okay, and you can see that we're, we're um, logged in with James at 10.10.10.10 .10 so let's just press control L and we'll say show databases on here. Okay, And as you can see we only get in listing of the information underscore schema and the DB James because he only has the privileges for this one database. Alright, doesn't have any other privileges for any other database. Um, now if we say create um, database of uh, tester okay we see we get access denied because he's not permitted um, to access any other database and that would mean also to create any other databases because he only he is he's kind of like stuck with inside of this one database he can't get out of it and he can't do anything more than that okay although he can see it now he could for example say drop database and say DB James okay and that would then drop the database which would seem kind of redundant but now there's only one there but now let's just press control L to clear let's just say show databases again okay but he could now say create database DB James okay and that would work fine the reason being is because he has the entitlement to access that one database and we've given him the privileges to do everything apart from grants okay so he can create insert update delete drop truncate and so on he can do everything apart from grants on there 
and even to delete that one database and to create that database so this is how tight the MySQL server can be if you only give the, u the user privileges on one database um, that one user can't get outside of that one area okay can't see anything can't do anything and doesn't know that anything else exists around it okay so um, and this is only on from one machine so we're explicitly stating um, on here uh, my mouse is giving me a nightmare at the moment which one are we on now okay this is then on the actual um, logged in as David uh, on the machine so just to show you select user is David at the moment okay so how can we then see the privileges that James has okay now as David logged into this we're I'm like the main main super administrator of this one MySQL server um, we don't want to do grant we want to say show grants for and then we say the user okay for James whoops at and then the host okay and the host is a, a uh, on the host machine which he can access it is at 10.10.10.10 so we're always stating the machine that that user is going to be on not the machine that the user is trying to access okay and as you can see here we've got grant usage which don't be misled by this term usage usage just means it can't do anything okay but it's able to actually get onto the server itself so although usage sounds like you can do lots of stuff it's basically doing absolutely nothing so you've got grant usage on everything to James okay without it, it means nothing so you can just completely ignore this usage means he, you can't do anything okay um, grant all privileges on DB James okay on this one database on all tables to this one here okay so that's potentially what we're saying now we could reduce this down even further to just one table on this one database okay if we gave one table and we could reduce it down to even further just one column on one table on one database okay and we could reduce it down even further and say that you can only have the select prop uh, select command on one database on one table of that database and and on one column of that database okay so when they're locked with inside of that one area um, they can't get out any further okay but the most important thing to remember here oh my mouse has been a nightmare what's going on uh, important things to note note here is is that when you enter the the uh, host um, as in here this is the host of the machine which they they're going to be coming from not that they want to access okay and now let's just clear this now we're as the root here let's say for example that James has now become um, super important with inside of this company right and we want to give James the access to everything now okay but we don't want to give him the grant option okay so what we're going to do is we're going to say um, create user once again okay and we're going to be creating James as well um, but this time we're going to create not what we're doing we're going to create James on every single host okay so potentially James can access and do everything and access from any single host possible all right um, and then identified by and then with James as the super administrator with a fantastic password okay with whoops need a semicolon with the password okay so now James has the same user of James but um, is now a user on every single host but so let's say he's the MySQL server administrator externally so he wants to go around and, and administer all the the connections on there or whatever okay so now we need to grant him permissions so we're going to say grant all on every single database on every single table of every single database okay grant positions on sorry every single database every single table on, on every single database as well to and then we say James at and we're gonna use the wildcard okay at every single host okay and we're, but we're not going to give him the grant privileges okay so we're going to leave off with option or with with grant option as well so although James can see everything can do everything he can't give out user permissions he can't he can't allow other people to access it he can only do everything himself okay so we're going to say enter to that we then say flush privileges okay and uh, we're just going to say flush hosts 
for the sake of doing it. Okay, now let's come back over to um, James, James which is logged in here, and let's just do quit, okay? And let's just press Control L to clear. And now let's log him in, okay? So let's say user James, um, host is then, he wants to access 10.10.10.30, okay? And P, let's put in his mighty strong password. Now he's accessible, okay? We've nothing, nothing has changed so far. But now let's just press Control L to clear. And now let's say show databases. Okay, and we only get James still, so that's ah, okay. What we do need to do is what we need to do is say revoke, okay, um, revoke, revoke all uh, on um, db James dash star from James at and then 10.10.10.10 okay because this one this one's potentially overriding uh, the other one so um, show grants for James at 10.10.10.10 okay that still shows up but we want to we want to drop this one user because it's it's given us hassles drop user James at 10.10.10.10 .10 we want James to be able to access everything okay so let's just say flush privileges again okay and then let's see if we find that one flush hosts okay now let's say show grants um, for James at every single host okay okay now you can see that James has got access to every single database on every single host Okay, so this that was just causing a, a couple of problems there. So let's log uh, James back out again. Okay, and let's log him back in once again. Okay, now let's hopefully say show databases. Okay, now you can see that James can see every single database. So the fact of the matter is, is because James had two users on there, he had James at and then 10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10 .10. But because he was coming in then on 10.10, .10, it, it used that one user. But because he also had a wildcard added second, okay, it never got past that 10.10.10.10. .10 therefore, he only got um, permissions on db underscore James. So therefore, we had to drop that one user. And then, um, yeah, that was basically we had to drop that one user. But now James has got permissions on everything. Now let's say... Um, that James has accessed this. So now let's try his um, create database once again. So gr create database um, db John, for example. Maybe he wants to give a database to John. Okay, we can see that that all works fine. Okay, but what he can't do, right? What he can't do is um, grant privileges to John. Okay, so he can say create John at 10.10.10.10. .10 okay. And then identified by then password, so he can create John. But what he can't do is grant all privileges to, uh, uh, sorry, on these database and tables to then John. John at ten dot ten dot ten dot ten. Okay. He can't do that. So he can he can make the user, he can make the database, get everything ready, but what he can't do is give that one user the privileges to access that one database. So we would then have to, he John would then have to um, give me a call or chuck me an email and say, hey, David, I've got John, I've made the user already. Can you please give John at 10.10.10.10 .10 privileges on db underscore John, please? I could then do it, flush privileges, then John would then have the access. So potentially um, he can do 99% of the work, but the final the final um, decision comes from me, as I'm the only one um, person who has the grant option, okay? So no one else can give any grants privileges to access anything, it's only me that can do it. Now, but if I gave John the grant, the with grant option, 
Okay, then John could do everything, and John, or uh, James, sorry, could potentially then kick me out and kick the root out and kick everyone out. So you should um, only allow the grant option to be given out to specific people, okay? And you only ever give out privileges to the database for that one user, okay? Every single database they want, rather than giving them everything, what you do is you give them one database and say, hey, you can access this one database. Then they need to access another one. Therefore, you make a new user for them on that one database. And then they want a third one, you make a new user for that one database. Okay, so they have a whole list of databases all the time that they're permitted to um, access. Okay, rather than um, letting them access it, um, rather than letting them access everything. Now, but just remember that you have to um, put the the IP address of that person's machine in the host table. So when you're granting them privileges on which machine, it's the machine that they're going to be sat on. Now, potentially, um, we have you know dynamic IP addresses always changing. Uh, therefore, it would seem crazy to have to always update the IP addresses. Now, the the method which we used previously um, was to use then the percentage sign, which is a wildcard to say every single host. Now it's okay to use every single host if you only grant privileges for the databases. Okay, So the access level of which machine they can access on doesn't matter but the fact is they might be able to log in to the MySQL server but then they can't access anything. Okay, They can't access any database, they can't read, write, select, update and do whatever to any database. So leave the permissions at the database level rather than the MySQL server level. Okay, Allow them to come in with a password but then once they're in they can't do anything. All right? um, that's basically it for now. I hope this has been um, informative. I know there's a lot more to it and I'm really thinking that there's not a huge amount of people that are, are interested in learning about MySQL at this that this level most people want to know how to select data from the database insert update and delete and, and drop tables and and so on but this is a little bit of a higher level um, but it, it's if you're more interested in say hosting uh, a, a database to your employees and stuff and allowing them to have privileges for de departments then for the sake of learning some SQL commands um, this is important for the privileges level this can go even further okay we could probably do another five, six, seven, eight tutorials just about this, okay? But this is just an insight um, to how it works. All right. Now I might have a look through the tutorial, these two tutorials once again, just to see uh, which stuff could be um, added to. Okay. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. My name's David Thorne. I'm from Thorne Web Design. Um, if you've got any feedback, please don't hesitate to comment. Um, if you need to contact me privately, then contact me through YouTube. Okay, come and visit me on Facebook uh, otherwise so it's facebook.com forward slash thorn design. Um, otherwise, I hope you learned something and have a nice day. Thank you. Bye bye.